Hi, so this is going to be a very different, very special video than that which you're probably used to having and receiving from me. I really had the strong call today to just offer this as something different, as something unique. There's probably, you know, so many people nowadays doing pick a card reading, oracle readings, tarot readings, divine love readings, twin flame readings, all of that. And this is nothing about that, okay? This is just a calling I had. I was contemplating after a beautiful meditation today on my mountain river beach. And I just had this pull to do a pick a symbol, <laughs> pick a oracle reading, but it's going to be about your Illumin mission. And it's going to have different aspects of it. So uh, there's, you know, everything is intertwined as always, but this was really coming strongly through spirit today. I was just so eager to do this. Although, as you know, I offer many beautiful uh, transmissions of the light for those of you who are called to walk on a much higher path than the majority of the people are used to, you know, more devoted life, more illumined path. So this reading for me will be about what is your uh, illumined mission? What is your illumined purpose here in the life and beyond? And it's going to have many different aspects. So I was pre-planning. I was creating this all day, actually. I was in my hammock. And I was just envisioning all these and which oracles to use and how to really approach that from a grounded and holistic uh, perspective that includes both this higher aspect of your divine mission and also how it's enclosed and what you're now experiencing at this time here on Earth and uh, things like that, okay? So there will be a pick an item. <laughs> this is how you can attune with your messages. Perhaps, you know, you will feel called mm, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Um, still, I advise you to choose one option because it will be uh, more sovereign for you this way. It will more verify and confirm what you really feel called. And maybe even within that reading, take what resonates with you. There are elements that kind of might resonate from all three. There's going to be three options because, as you know, everything functions in Divine Trinity. And I am a full devotee and applicant of this Divine Trinity of Life principle. And I use it in all these aspects. So there's going to be nine oracles I'm actually working with, nine aspects. So this is like uh, three times three, okay? There's a divine trinity of that. And it represents sort of a completion. That's what came through um, after this most recent gateway of the divine mother's uh, presence through the Mary's assumption and all that kind of coming together. This really uh, kind of affirm that this is the right thing to do. And besides, I have too many oracles at home. And what better way to put them to practical good use than this, okay? And I haven't been at home that much in the summer days, but it really, felt, it really felt beautiful to do this. So I was, even from not in my home space, because, you know, we're all in one space, I was envisioning which items, what comes together, already like compiling it. So when I actually came to sit down and do the messages, I pre-shuffled, I pre-did everything because then the video would be super long. It's already probably going to be too long. <laughs> if I get it too deep into the messages, there will be all channel messages. Please know that. I work with Spirit directly. When I'm in this vessel state, it just flows. Things just flow. So people who have sessions with me or they receive a Spirit transmission, um, they know this and they know how I work, but I have to be in that state, which means, you know, it has to be the right divine timing and alignment. alignment. <laughs> That's why this was a strong calling today. Okay, so take what really feels centered in your heart. Uh, there's elements that might apply, um, how to say this, with all these three. Um, but what Spirit is showing me is that there's more advanced souls who come here and they can have all these three aspects that came through today's reading. And they can actually carry all, all of these as the mission 
but you know, within the great greater purpose, but still the focus will be kind of filtered. It will be one thing that will be more maintained, will be more required of you through your presence at this time in this lifetime. Okay, so that's really important. Go with what feels right, um, feel the energy, you know, maybe the number, maybe the item I'm going to show you. Um, the process I went uh, into, into this reading through, you know, into this reading was very lengthy. Like I said, I was creating it in my mind's vision through my third eye all day. And I just sat down, I chosen the right oracles that felt appropriate. And then I actually um, shuffled the cards until the card fell out with asking the question that came with that oracle. I'm gonna show you everything, I'm gonna explain everything. Um, I hope you will like it. But it was really, I probably was shuffling for like half an hour, but the cards were just jumping, jumping in like crazy. So uh, not one of these cards I actually pulled out for you. They were all kind of coming out through divine synchronicity. You can feel that as energy pushing them out. I want it to be shared. So don't get a bit upset because some have more cards than others. So I took, if more fell out, that's what I, uh, that's what I took. And I didn't adjust any single thing, so uh, it will just be coming through in its purest way and form as possible. Okay, then I also felt the main themes, like the main uh, mission statements coming through as well. So you can use that to uh, really affirm with yourself, with your inner knowing, or maybe explore deeper levels of who maybe you haven't even considered yourself to be. And maybe some of you who are more advanced on your path will go like, yeah, I already know this, but thank you for the details or all of that. And maybe some people would, you know, just like they're maybe still at the beginning of the path and some things will feel a little foreign to them where they'll feel, no, 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 no way I'm doing that. But a lot of the things we're doing, let me again re-emphasize this, are happening at the subtle levels of our being. Our conscious mind does not always have to be present with that or aware of that. But the more you work with yourself consciously and activate those aspects of you and then embody them, the more they will come into your awareness, okay? So let's better get started because there's many messages that are waiting to come through, okay, right? I'm working with my web again, uh, webcam again, sorry, tongue tied a bit, but um, I hope this will come through um, with nice sound and everything. The camera is a little old, so yeah. Okay, first I'm gonna show you um, the three items. So we're gonna do the oracles. I'm also gonna show you the feather that comes along with that. With each feather, we're gonna kinda cut through and we're gonna open the space for that energy and the messages coming through. Today I'm wearing just a simple shell, no special crystal. Well, these are um, some crystals I like to wear, these uh, angel ones. Uh, but the shell always reminds me of the Divine Mother. You know, the pearl uh, and the shell kind of are the language of the earthy gifts that the mother, the mother's language speaks through, okay? Okay, I wanted, somehow that wanted to come through. So, yeah, and then at the end, we're going to also pull one gemstone if you have any additional messages. So let's get started. Um, first, um, I will show you the items. Then I will show you the oracles we're going to work with. And then we're going to start. Okay, so... Item number one, and they all apply with um, somehow the messages as well, okay, with what's uh, coming through the oracles and uh, channel guidance. So number one is, if you can see that, it's a golden Buddha. I don't, I'm not sure which stone this is. It's like a yellow golden sitting meditating Buddha. That's um, item number one. And the feather that goes with it is the buzzard's feather my uh, spirit animal guide very often, most often. Um, item number two is a pophilite crystal pyramid. You can see it like here. Okay, I hope it can zoom in. If not, that's okay. That's number two. And the feather that goes with it is this. Can you guess what this is? It looks kind of bluish here. It's actually black. It's a raven's feather. I hope, I assume. <laughs> and item number three is this beautiful, it looks like Swarovski, I'm not sure if it is, the crystal swan. Okay, here's the camera showing it like this. And I don't think it wants to zoom in, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I hope the message comes across either way, right? So look good on my third eye, or on my head. <laughs> it's like a nice decor. So, and the feather that goes with this is this one, it's a little painted though. It's a swan's feather just as well as the swan is our item. Okay, good. So I'm gonna show you the oracles and we're gonna open the energy with each feather and we're gonna begin. Begin the juicy challenge session. I'm so looking forward to this. 
So finally I could, I could dress up a bit because in my nature videos, I'm all like, you know, a little crass and things. So anyway, let's do this. So the first triad will hold the message for your overall more illumined uh, mission, which means what you are here to work on at higher levels. This is not always what you might perceive yourself as doing in your physical life. This is the energy transmission you are here to uh, radiate with on this planet and something that also applies to you beyond just being on this planet. So I'm using these three oracles, which is a lightworker oracle. You probably know that one. And I'm using the sacred geometry activations. And I'm using the crystal mandala oracle. So these three will all speak to me, will speak to us about your illumined presence and mission at large. Then the next triad, okay, um, are these oracles. First is the Life Purpose Oracle, which will be speaking about what are your main gifts that you really like to use in a practical way, what you really like to do, or maybe something you're guided yet to do if you're not doing that yet. And this is more like something you're actually doing. This is something that actually is talent put in practice and it's very creative for you. Then the second one is going to be the message from your angels. What your angels at this time would like to know. You know, angelic guidance is very soft, soothing, and loving. It just reaffirms your presence and gives you the reassurance that it's a little different than maybe uh, this one that will be, what is the message of your family of light? This is work your light work. This is a very beautiful oracle indeed with the art and everything. So this will be messages from your family of light. What this means for you, you probably know in your heart, you're feeling it, your, your group, your team, mission team, you know, those of you who are supporting you in every way possible, which they always are. Um, and the third triad, sounds good, doesn't it? Is going to be then how to apply this, then uh, how to apply this in your in your life. So the first one will be how what's maybe there's still left to heal a little bit of that maybe residual something that's left to heal and perfect oracle which is heal yourself oracle cards. This will be your message. The first one of the triad. The second one will be how to more embody yourself, your soul, so that this mission can flow more easily. This is going to be an aspect of what the Divine Mother has to share with you. This is the embodiment. The Divine Mother represents the body, the spirit coming into flesh. This will be the Divine Feminine Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, some have more cards than one. And the last one is from the Akashic Tarot, and this one will hold the message, what is still for you to activate? Maybe which gifts are still dormant and what you're still called to activate on your path. And because I would like to again um, re-emphasize or make that subtle and of course important statement that um, these messages are for a large audience, but I wanted to specifically put them out for people who follow me, maybe for a longer time and you are all definitely light workers and beings uh, that I call volunteer souls and all that but you still have your kind of like sub themes and the way you work and how you work so people who follow me maybe for a longer time is gift you know for everything that maybe you've ever shared with me all of your beautiful loving feedback this is kind of like uh, from me to you and this is the Leo season which is like super creative we're getting so many visions and ideas you know I know I am so um, yeah, but that's why, I mean, just apply that as well as I'm going to read the cards also to yourself. Also get, I always tell this to everyone, get your messages in parallel when I'm sharing something. Let that stimulate your inner knowing. Like, oh, but this sparks up this and that, like almost if you're reading a book. You're not just reading it in a linear way. You're reading it multidimensionally. So something like a word or a phrase or maybe like the whole book is just triggering a knowledge that is also coming as a sub part of that like a, in segments you know it's coming out what you're also creating with that book so it's a co-creation every book that we read or everything we ever receive as information we will create our own triangulation with it so it will be our own knowledge coming through just as what we're actually taking in as that information so let that be a word of guidance, a word of advice before we begin. And now, may we actually begin, okay? So please just take at heart what resonates. It may be something that's still unfamiliar. Maybe you can come back at a later time. Um, just really be firmly connecting with your soul. You have probably enough time by now to choose your item. If not, pause, take a break. Maybe drink a tea or something, herbal tea. Do a few ohms. That's always very beautiful and influential as well. Or maybe hold a crystal in your hand that you feel somehow calls you out. And just really go with that process, into that process with awareness. 
you know, it's not like something, oh, I should have choose this and that. This is not about that. This is about going really much deeper on, on our path. But if some of you are called to maybe after this or even in general to have more, more just applied for you. As you know, my personal services page is always there. It's always in the go. It's in the offering. Uh, I do Skype sessions. Um, I have many different aspects that I can do. I have um, soul transmissions, which are almost like readings like this um, through spirit and some more lighter forms like an ascension grid, this layout via Merkaba formation and just a simple question you can ask me. Okay, let's start. Whew, deep breath, everyone. Okay, 15 minutes <laughs> into the mix. So if you have chosen this beautiful Buddha, yellow golden Buddha, we're gonna start the process by taking the accompanying feather, buzzard feather, and we're gonna go, that's above, so below, as within, so without, from left to right, my feminine, masculine self in balance. So just creating this space, opening the space with a cross and creating them a circle around me. May we open up the sacred space of spirit for this process, thank you. Okay, <laughs> so here are your cards. It's beautiful, I ah, can see the shadow, Ooh, teasing you. <laughs> okay, let's start this. So the first thing I'm guided to say is this little golden Buddha, as you know, it represents um, a sort of, you know, Buddha always represents enlightenment, but not, not only that, it represents bringing something that hasn't been there before in creation. It is, you know, like each master brought forth an avatar energy that was meant to be seated in that specific period of time. Um, throughout the eon, that was meant to be a theme playing out in all of creation. So this is also about bringing in something very specific into the element of the whole and realizing that through your own inner wholeness. So that's the first message coming through. Um, as always, you know, Buddha meditation, but this is more like what I'm feeling at this time is bringing that, I feel this reminds me more of that because it's like the chubby version of Buddha, of, of the laughing Buddha, you know, which is like that very wise, like old version of Buddha that's just laughing. It's just that, that laughter at once you really get the bigger picture and you can bring more humor and, you know, it's not just, it's not like fully gold, he's yellow and yellow is that color of spontaneity, of joy, um, of human enjoyment, truly, you know, positivism, yellow color, very bright to work with. So yeah, that's really a message coming through, but really a unique something that you are here to kind of like put in as that seed. It reminded me of that golden seed I often talk about in my videos, like the golden seed within a creation that you're meant to plant. Okay, now the first card you have um, is from the Lightworker, Oracle Ascension, the Rainbow Bridge. So the first word or phrase coming through was the Grid Workers. Okay, so that was kind of like the group number one was the Grid Workers. This is Ascension, the Rainbow Bridge. So what you do to assist the planet at this time is to, like I said, you're writing the seeds, specific programs um, into the grid of the planet so that something can eventually be born out of it. So you're assisting to kind of like create this bridge from, you know, like bridging the gaps between higher celestial realms, different uh, levels or dimensions and fueling that and bringing that to this earthly realm at this time. So you can see there's rainbow color here. You can sometimes play with different gemstones and kind of create them into a rainbow. Uh, it's almost like there is this natural tendency within you to be aligned with the crystalline frequency because this is, you know, aligning with the Gaia's core, your own core, working through pulling light through your um, ascension column of light or the ascension pillar, the white pillar of light, and through that, creating a rainbow bridge. And you are definitely a part of the team that is here to work on the crystal grid. You might connect also here, feel with the group of many others, uh, like, you know, light workers often do. Uh, but it's, again, you see, it's like the Buddha meditates, this being here meditates. It's a part of your mission is a lot to just meditate and to allow to be the vessel for whatever kind of codes are coming through to just, without the ego or, if, you know, filters happening, this spontaneously and magically occurring through you. So that's the first message. The second one, we got, we got two, okay? First one was the belief, and then was the, rom sorry, <laughs> wrong turn, is the romantic love. So these two cards. 
Okay, I'm going to show you this one. And then this one. So the belief says, the frequency of belief supports our sense of self-worth based on our gifts and talents and a strong connection to source. You definitely have that. Um, but you need to kind of constantly charge it. Um, here is a lot of the color of uh, violet flame. You're working with the violet fire. That's natural. All grid workers do. Um, so you're also, as you're putting these new codes into the grid, you're also simultaneously, it's kind of like, you know, a part of this, which we, we always feel like, oh, it's going to be all love and light and beautiful writing these codes. Part of this will be also like, you know, taking out the old codes, the stagnant codes. And this is what the violet flame energy is here. This 11, 11 is also here as that master number. Um, and here we have the, the 18. So this is about oh, 18. We are in a 18 year now, 2018, which is, this is also a message. This is kind of like an important year for you as the great worker, like you're completing something. Like maybe one cycle of, of your writing program and then you're going to go up, upgrade your, um, it's kind of like uh, I see this master encoder or decoder of, of energy. This is what I'm feeling. So the frequency of belief supports you. And when you truly know this, when you reaffirm that that's your mission, even the, the seeming sometimes things that you render not so important in your life will, will be seen as a part of everything you're learning from the divine. It's like, you have to embrace the human journey because when you do, you realize that from embracing the human journey and perspective, you can actually move deeper into your work because, you know, as, as, as deeper into the shadow that we go, the more light can we bring on this planet. That's what working with the violet flame is so important. Um, this is what I'm feeling here. And the star forms, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight pointed star. That's the soul star um, formation. That's the over soul essence as well. So definitely, like I said here, you're working with the group of beings. This is also, some of you might be, um, yeah, definitely. If, if you don't know about this, you probably know about this, right? Because you're here. 144,000 beings of light and uh, being called or under the domain of Sanat Kumara as the planetary sacred keeper. Um, and I also have an audio about this. There's a mini audio book that explains this and who these beings are. You might be interested in that. Um, but there's definitely th this connection constantly needs to be fueled by you. But this doesn't mean only connecting with meditation upwards. You need to do a lot of grounding work. This kind of the pillar energy always connects both ends, the spirit and the matter. It doesn't work the other way. So the second message about romantic love, you might be going like, mm, how does that fit in? Well, it does because this is like self-loving self-romanticizing means that the more love you know with a, a part of this when you put this light you're working with the light then you are actually creating new waves of love because light will open up the gateways towards divine love light is information love is creation but what i'm feeling here specifically as well is that a lot of you might be a part of this what i share about the Illumin union and with your twin soul counterpart in this Illumin union, you're writing these codes together. This is a very sacred mission and not everyone is kind of like equipped to do this because it requires the purest of beings to do that. And when we're part of Earth and Earth's <laughs> sphere, as you know, we have to walk through a lot of shadow as well. This is what makes us truly understand this world and what people here need to go through. So this is why working with the violet flame keeps your energy pure and keeps you intact. But this is, this is important. So as you're working with the light, you're also working with the element of love. Don't forget this. Um, love is this essence of creativity. So every time you, you put or you do an activation or light activation, I do light activations all the time, especially now. It's so emphasized. And then I open more waves to love with this. But it works together. This is working together in unison. It says... The frequency of romantic love supports our journey to feel whole and complete through the experience with and reflection of a conscious lover. This is also definitely about divine partnership. Uh, but you begin this with this self-love that is a part of these activations. And the more you understand the human realms, the human love, the deeper you can go into bringing divine love into physical form. Because otherwise it's like it stays up here. This is definitely not your mission. The third message here is, of course, it aligns as well with your mission. It's about the pillar of creation. It's about this white um, uh, original self. It is from the Ascended Master, White Matthew and Dan Bright. It's about the original self. This is the white. This is the blank slate. This is like 
every color you've ever worked with, every aspect, every experience you've embraced, you always go back to blank state. This is what, you know, like I said, these keepers of this, the ascension pathway and building the rainbow bridge, it's from the white, right? From the prism of white light that the rainbow magic actually uh, is created. So it's like you always have to go back to purity through the violet flyer, through love. Uh, you always go back to your source. So no matter how deep you sometimes go into these roots, because that's what, um, you know, like grid workers do in that way. And it, a lot of people consider themselves grid workers at the general description of that we might say well we are living within the this grid well yeah but you know we are part of it but the grid workers are actually those who are really putting these codes higher spirit channel codes and putting them in um you know so the original self is like you are working at the core creation level that's what this message is now let's go more into the next triad which is your gifts of course the crystals card comes out this doesn't really, for me, talk only about the physical crystals you can work with that assist this journey. A lot of you will because grid workers always carry a lot of crystals and some of them are even living them like random places in nature or creating grid works, like crystal grids with them, or maybe just like, you know, knowing which crystals to sometimes just leave off somewhere or with, maybe even with other people. Um, but definitely here, what I feel here, it's like reaching for this crystal star is a lot of you, of course, are starborn and your mission is to carry these codes at the stellar frequencies of your own, like, original self. This, your own understanding, like, what you have once already synthesized, you understand this work, then you said, I'm going to do here on Earth, you know, kind of like a simultaneous process that's happening in parallel so your connection to crystals and gemstones is a channel for healing energy this like i said relates to working with physical crystals but also with the crystalline frequency because the rainbow bridge and the grid workers we all work within the crystalline grid of light on earth okay so that's that's your gift <laughs> like i said also maybe teaching others about you know like a part of what you do on earth it's like what you do what your higher self is doing through you a lot of it is like also doing crystal activations or working with channel frequency that comes at a certain specific tone because crystals also, they don't just carry light or work with light or, you know, like through different colors that they have within, that's the light they're kind of like beaming out. They're also connected with sound. And a lot of this reminds me because of this, you see the original self has wings here. This reminds me of the seraphine frequency. As you know, my page is called Seraphine Light because... My highest aspect is of the seraphim, you know, it's descending here. So um, this sometimes, it reminds me also working with sound. It's like reminds me here because it's like reaching for this crystal frequency is like a lot of you might also be called to work with sound. Okay, light and sound together have crystals. So the message from your angels is what you desire. And it says, you now have the opportunity to write the script according to your heart's true desires. Once you clearly decide upon your true desires and know that you're ready and deserving of them, they'll rush into your life as if by magic. What this reminds me of is that a lot of the times, because you get so infatuated with your work, I know I do, <laughs> sometimes you might forget about just you, you know, like what do you desire? What does your human counterpart desire? Because this path sometimes can be a lot of us forgetting that we're also humans now and with learning the human realm, what the, the human self craves, the inner child, does our divine creation, and learning how to give that to ourselves. This is not separate from what you would say, oh, the highest aspect of me is doing this grid work. When you're happy and fulfilled, this will naturally, more naturally kind of fuse together what, what you're actually here to do. So the angels are letting you know that it's very important for you to acknowledge your desires, not always be so eager to serve. Remember that when we serve from the perspective of sacrifice, like, oh, I need to heal the planet at the expense of the self. A lot of times this was old dogma. True service comes from unity, which means you serve first and you serve forward because you're serving from a place of wholeness. And that is true healing. It's completion. You're doing it from not a space of lack. The planet lacks something. Other people lack something. You can give them that. That's not true service. So sometimes if some of you forget that, 
your angels want to remind you that it is important for you to feel like you're in a lush garden within which you can create, like the garden of Eden of your own creation because you are a powerful creator. But a lot of your creation energy goes into grid work and maybe you feel like, ooh, I'm depleted of energy. What's left for me to create? Maybe just something mundane like creating a nice meal for yourself because you were so busy doing all this and you just come home, be tired. But this work, Costly channeling this energy and activations of light, I'll tell you, it requires so much energy. You might not be the one who exercises all the time and you still feel like always, energy is always rushing for me. It's like, why well, I'm always <laughs> depleted in a way because so much of energy is just moving through you. And feeding your inner child, feeding your human self and these desires is actually helping this process. It's not separate from it. So you're not selfish taking care of yourself. That's the message. Messages from your family of life. Boy, you have many. I don't know how many cards flipped out here. Four, five? No, wait a minute. <laughs> no, four. Yeah, four. Sorry. Four. You have... No, no, no. Sorry, five. <laughs> I thought this was not in your, part, your card, but it is. Um, this was very beautiful, but they all jumped in, and I wanted to... You know, they said, no, no, all of them. Okay, I'm just going to browse through quickly. So your family of light, because obviously what I feel, you've been working a lot. <laughs> Some of us who do that, we have been. It's been really intense because there was so much requirement for this because not a lot of people, even those coming here with this particular mission, might not always wake up to this fact and or maybe do it with empowerment. A lot of them are still doing this from a lack of consciousness or victim mentality. So your message is, first one, take a break. Okay, here you have uh, like a nice, what is this, like a dome of light? No, it's like a cathedral or something, like a sacred space. And there's like a lake and someone's bathing there or just meditating there. And says so a life's work, not a season. Get off the treadmill. So ooh, some of you maybe been very naughty and doing all the work, but no play. Uh, you know, like what's your desires? It's combined with your angelic uh, message. You also have here Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. So this affirms that this is what you're doing. You see, there's like different points on the planet, like grid points. Um, maybe some of you were even called to go to these specific power places. Here you have Egypt and I don't know which ones are on it. Like you see, there's different points. There's different acupuncture points that are represented by human embodiments. They're the pillars, you know, they're the ones who are seeding this highest consciousness like like i said putting it into the creature's design into the grid work of the planet but just because of that you are doing that and you have been like completing a cycle now um there's something within now this now time framework when your family of light wants you to take a break as well because the completion of the cycle doesn't always occur by you know it doesn't occur through our control at a certain point we need to just really let it go so that a higher level what we're actually here to do may present itself and this is what they also say align your life something in your life is aligning at the higher degree what is no longer in alignment with who you truly are is the question so sometimes we are so eager to serve that we won't notice the tiny little droplets of life that we always say everything's fine in our life i can tell you from my own example when i was serving from like always being busy I didn't have time to even notice the things in my own life are no longer working for me. I just always thought everything's fine. And then I took a step back. Then I saw so much really not resonating with me anymore. Like how I live, where I live, all these things are like coming into the forefront because I wasn't filling that space always just with service, just with serving others. I was creating the space to serve myself as well. And this is when the alignment of your life like you might feel like, oh, but if I step back, then I don't know what to do with myself. That's sometimes perfect because then what you really are just naturally doing will come align, you know, along. So there's different fragments, pieces that are coming into a new version of wholeness. So you've been gathering a lot of information, I feel, but it's time for synthesis now. And this is what this um, laying the foundations divine plan is about. Um, the next one is star seed, what lights you up? Like I said, stellar origin, <laughs> star beings. Um, it's like also the divine child here. It's like, it's time for you now to, you know, what do you desire? It's time for you now to look into that a little bit. I think this was the first card. I just didn't lay them out in the divine order. It says pillar of light. And in combination with this one, see, uh, grandmother of Jesus. These are the people who really had 
mighty influences. A lot of them, like the grandmother of Jesus, Anna, was much in the background. She wasn't that much talked about. A lot of the pillars are doing this work behind the scenes. They don't want to be talked about. They maybe don't even, you know, do public work like I do. Um, but this is about at this time, your vibration is rising, you are the oracle, which means you are at the realignment level. It's time to take a break and allow life to align with even a higher version of you that maybe you can't imagine when you're always going the treadmill the same way. So the next triad, the last triad for you, boy, these messages are long, right? I tell you it's going to be lengthy. The first one is, what is maybe there is still to heal, okay? And we have from these cards, hole in the soul. Ooh, the imagery is kind of spooky, right? Don't take it that literally, by the way. Um, this is, like I said, this is when we are filling the holes with the same old, same old. We can't always see, but what's the little things that maybe I really don't like, you know? Don't resonate anymore. For a while it was fine, then it no longer is. This is that message. Um, let that die, but you can't let it die when you're filling the space always with the same, the same energy, because you always say, but that's just what I do. That's just who I am. Mm, eh, wrong. <laughs> there is no such thing. That's just what I do. And that's just who I am. Because the, the self, the true self is so multi-layered, multifaceted. It's truly multidimensional that there is no one way, you know, that you are what you do. And that's when you truly are illumined, you know, so it, it has to be this way, seen from a higher perspective that, you know, it's always shifting. And that's why when you're truly in balance and in harmony with yourself, these shifts are just naturally occurring. You're not like preventing them or resisting the energy because you're always stuck with the same, but you don't realize there's something like a hole there. So if you let something go, oh, ooh, there's a hole there. Yes, but it's a hole with a purpose. So something dies. And a new aspect can be born. And sometimes it will be a little messy or bleedy. That's a part of the process. That's how we embody in the human realm. Okay? So don't get afraid of these things that show up. It's not. This is not about the wounds. This is not about having wounds. This is about allowing life to also have its downtime. To have complete vacancy sometimes. To have a void. To understand this void so that space within you can be filled. Then how can you more embody your soul? Um... The feminine aspect, what is the Divine Mother of Life wants you to know? You have the Kini, the Enlightened Feminine. Boy, she is the counterpart of this little laughing Buddha, isn't she? <laughs> well, he's like a little too small. <laughs> um, my gut instinct is wise beyond reason. I trust my intuition to guide me. Okay, so this is about <clears throat> completely trusting yourself. Knowing that because as an illumined being, I forgot maybe to say that this is about illumined beings. Usually this is about luminaries because they know how to do this work. Not everyone is chosen for this work, okay? Um, it takes a lot of, a lot of courage, a lot of cosmic training even, you know, <laughs> we know. Um, and sometimes on earth, we won't always trust it. We will resist that, the knowing, the deepest knowing. And our lessons will then revolve around it, you know, when we don't trust completely. So... This like this beautiful counterpart energy, which reminds me of that uh, romantic love card that a lot of you came in these illumined partnerships. Some of you physical, some of you not, but you, either way, you will have a physical union that correlates with that twin twinning process, which is the illumined gateway for how this translation of the codes truly comes in. So um, the Dakini is definitely this wise one, the wise one, the illumined one. But she wants you to use even the gut. We always say, no, 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 the higher, the higher. Well, the gut holds that wisdom of how to know our practice and our training on earth. Because every time the application of that knowledge will, will be different, will vary. That's what this Dakini lets you know. And the last one is, what gifts are still there to be activated perhaps? Wow, well, you have number one, the Oracle of Delphi. Yes, this is like the high priestess. But again, you see she's here with her. She on the chair, she's on the spotlight, and there's the scribe here. Um, one message here is to know that even though you're a vessel, you are a vessel for these higher energies. You do not work alone. There's always something working with you. You have assistance plus assistance, okay? It doesn't mean like these are lesser positions. It means they're, they're kind of com um, counterparts that complete each other. It's like, okay, she channels the words, but who's there translating them? Maybe that's the message, okay? So it's like, again, there's you're not just a vessel. You're also always in partnership. That's being activated now. 
so that this union of the masculine and feminine as the, the chalice of life, the scribe of life, you know, the divine work of truth, and then how the truth is told, that is very important. And that seeing the value of all, all gifts, because sometimes those who are at the highest um, energy uh, translations doesn't mean they're at the highest position. It just means that they're translating the highest energies possible at this time, at this time means that sometimes they will look down at the world and see everyone else as not as worthy okay this is the message that every part of creation plays a part so if you have divine word but no way or no one to speak it to okay it's like sometimes people who get famous overnight but you know how did you do deal without an assistant maybe they have like over flooding a thousand emails a day and what do they do they need someone to help them with that process or the filtering process of that um, this is like learning to apply the gifts of being the vessel, but in a partner partnership and maybe not just with one being, but being in partnership with life, allowing yourself to be served so you can serve. That's the strongest message, okay? I was receiving this message for a while now myself. Whew, I'm really heated up now. I wanted to wear long sleeves, but that was a bad idea. Now we're going to take an extra gentleman just for you. See what comes through. Maybe additional. Oh, you have, yeah, you have um, pink um, agate, I think. And this is about this, allowing just more love, allowing yourself also to be served. Because there's like energy flows in concentric circles here. So there's like allowing love to have, you know, it's like this pink is very intense in the middle and then it kind of waters down through different rings. I'm not sure you're going to see that. It's kind of like, the message here is your love can be intense at times. The way the way you do things can be intense. Sometimes for people, they will be like, ooh, I know it was like this in my own life. I had too, too much energy. I had too strong energy. Sometimes people even had physical reactions around me. So allow yourself to be in the pillar position, the first recipient of your love, of love divine that flows through you. But then maybe allow also that love to be watered down in the way that doesn't mean it's lesser of love. Just like the, the people or the situations can receive it in, in their own space the way they are. That's the message this crystal gives me. It's very beautiful. It's like allow the different levels of creation and love in this reality to be. Because like I said, sometimes if you're the highest energy channeling, you look down, you're like, oh, everyone is so dense. Everyone's like, what are they doing here? Little muggles. <laughs> little humor. But you know what I mean. This is what this message is. So thank you, group number one. Wow. You're really beautiful beings, and I thank you for being here on this planet at this time. This should be already the, the end of the video, and we're only at the number two. We're just at the middle. Oh, my God. I should just cut the intro out and just start channeling, and that's it, because I'm so heated up when I channel. Sometimes after my Skype sessions, I just need to take a shower because it's just so hot. Spirit, spirit. Okay, high energies. Okay, you have... Apophyllite pyramid, this will be whew, high on energy too. You can, if you have um, Apophyllite pyramid, just like if you work with intense energy, sometimes just do a little like this around your third eye. Maybe just put a little like this, like you're wearing a little small, tiny, beautiful hat. Uh, it can work magic. So we're going to use your feather now, the black magic feather. We're going to do that as above, so below, left to right, my feminine and masculine self, completely harmony and balance, create a circle of life. Asking the messages to be in unison and completion. Thank you. There we go. We have your set of cards. I wonder how many jumped out for you. <laughs> so what I want to say again, just with the message of the crystal itself, is this is, again, it's, it's channeling energy, but it's not the same as we had in the beginning. It's more like also filtering energy. It's like, you know, the, the pyramid gathers energy and then, filters through in its own way so it's like an amplifier of energy it means like there is a very specific purpose to what you've chosen to do it has it has to be carried out more with more specifics than even with the group one a lot of it's just like vessel whatever comes through comes through for you it's like more clarified you also always in your life probably you're seeking clarity like i want to know this i want to do this it's like very intense okay um, so you have, yeah, that's the message that Apoph Light gives me. But you're working also with a lot of energy, just with, with a different way. You need to purify a lot because you connect more with the collective energies here. Um, so like I said, just find a way to purify. 
you know, it's like uh, you're gonna see down the line along these messages. So you have from the light worker cards the paradigm shift. This is number four. This is four is the number of the physical realm, the physical reality. And it's like, see here, the gates are opening, almost like, oh, you know, and there's a beam that is like going all oh, scary. But the word I've heard is the paradigm shifters. So these beings are, it's a lot connected with the indigo frequency. So it's not like just, oh, beings who are born at that time. That No, it's more like the specificness of the way you choose to channel energy at this time to kind of like take those outdated programs, but then shift them with creativity. This is not like the grid working when you do it with the codes of light. This is like you're actually going out into the world and the systems and changing formats and templates the way things are built. So you're like um, like the assistance to number one. No, I'm just joking, but you know what I mean? Everything in creation is structured through divine orchestration of harmony and it's divine synergy always at play and all parts are interconnected okay there's an inter layout of, of this design that's so intrinsic that we don't really understand but when we trust our own connection we're always aligned with that so there's a doorway here and there's a doorway towards a new reality and you might always ask yourself the question what is really a new reality what are everyone talking about the paradigm shift but you kind of you're not so much in the mind with it you are just simply creating it you are the way you change yourself and the way you're creative you're already writing the new codes so this is a lot about um, being a very creative being using your talents resources to kind of shift within yourself and then because you're working with this transmission of energy that goes out into a lot of people so you might associate with a lot of people too but as the first group maybe had more like a family of light, they're working with the family of light, different groups of light beings, plus light worker communities, maybe they have their own groups. You're actually working with a lot of people physically as well here. So the second card here is Merkaba. This is the 32. And it says the frequency of Merkaba supports our ability to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic inheritance as well, merging the totality of our experiences into our present to serve our highest purpose. This reminds me of the Sirius energy. I don't know why, for some reason. Um, yeah, at the Sirius gate, which is looking at it just feels like a lot of you might have maybe um, connections with that, the way you serve through the Syrian gateway. <sighs> Lots of heat coming through as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely beautiful energy. But this is like, you're keeping the balance of, of the physical and the spirit, like I said, in a way that you're using the talents and resources because you're kind of like multi-talented. You can be one of those multitaskers even. Yeah, but you, you still channel it a specific way. The next one here we have two of the, um, what are these, the mandalas. We have Spear of the Guru Mother. And then we have Revelation. This is the turquoise energy. It's not showing up like this on camera, but it's truly turquoise. It's not blue. Okay. Um, angel, a meteor, and blue obsidian. See, blue obsidian. This is very indigo frequency. This is serious frequency. Um, spear of the Guru Mother. What I feel through this is that you are a messenger. You're more like a messenger types. You are the messengers for what is right, what is what is true balance, what is justice. Uh, you're one of those like uh, warriors and constant like fighters for good, not fighters in a negative sense. Um, yeah, this is like very beautiful energy. Very, you know, like one of those artworks that's kind of like abstract, but it holds so much in it. It's like if you would look into your fine print, that's how you look like a very abstract painting but still at the end you're looking from the far it, it all comes together and makes sense if you know what i mean this is what i'm getting mm, and this revelation is you're here to reveal you're here to bring things to the surface a lot of the people are also truth sayers you know uh, maybe start small and they kind of like expand this truth saying to bigger circles of light and i feel here like this protective energy as well like the ancient ones the elder ones but also um archangel energy especially archangel michael here it's like this because you have also this symbol here it's a uh, fleur de lis and uh this also reminds me like uh, of the secret societies you know and when, when they were still focused on the light and 
that meant preserving the truth so that it could have and unfold its true purpose that's not distorted. So you're here to bring forth back this undistorted frequency of truth and the rights of humanity and, you know, just like the human race. So what are some of the gifts, we have one card, that you are here to utilize that you're maybe already master of and maybe still learning about? This is teaching, okay? So you're maybe an awesome teacher in, in your field, whatever you're doing. Maybe it's like teaching in a small level. Maybe you're like a teacher, you know, not like a guru, more like teaching through life. You teach through life. It says you inspire young people to learn. A lot of you also work with the new kids, because you're, you have you have this great charisma about you, like I said, that attracts people towards you. And people just love you, even if they don't say it. But I'm sure a lot of you hear that a lot because you have this charming appeal. Because you're meant to be put on the spotlight that way, even if it's just like a small, small environment, maybe it's like a small community. But you'd be like, um, you know, the one that people come to. It's like sometimes just to shift energy, you're like sh you're, you shift a lot of energy. And the, the teaching is the way maybe you do it, but you, you do it in other forms as well. So this is something you love to do, or maybe something you're called to do as well. Um, but this is, like I said, this very artistic. You're teaching maybe also through means of art. Maybe some of you are teaching like intuitive way of art, or I don't know, whatever it is. So the messages from your angels, yeah, definitely art, because you have two messages. One is steady progress. And the other one is creative project. We're going to read both. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> but I'm sure you have these cards yourself. So the study progress says, We acknowledge you for the progress you've made in remembering love in your daily activities. We can clearly see the contribution you're making to the world through your thoughts, feelings, and actions of love. Definitely. See, lots of blue here as well. So you're going out into the world and doing a lot. I feel like, ooh, a lot of doing here present. And they're just wanting to acknowledge you that even though sometimes you're eager, sometimes you might be like, jumping in the first gun because you get so enthusiastic about what you want to create and what you want to establish and they're just saying sometimes just small impactful things are also enough just be discerning when it's time for large gestures of service and maybe small ones because there's no difference in between the two that's what they're saying so the creative project is again acknowledging how awesomely talented you are maybe there's a lot of you work with multimedia but it's not just like creating artwork or computer based artwork or literally painted or something like crafted artwork but the way you bring messages through is in a creative way that's why it appeals people because it's done not in that linear way like this teaching is you're also here to change that's what i'm also getting here yeah sorry um in the existing system you're meant to change the system from within it so you're not here to criticize it or to say how bad it is. That's kind of like a part of the not understanding of what we're here for or what you're actually specifically here for. But it's to creatively bring something that, you know, when you talk to a human who's maybe not that aware, if you tell them this is wrong, humanity's imprinted, this is in a linear way, they get scared. But if you give them options like, look, maybe this is a better, more enhanced way, maybe even with their kids, how they're bringing them up. And if you're showing them alternatives, they're going to shift because that that's what you do and it's just so awesome so you you have to approach everything you do creatively no rigid approach here or based on judgment and criticism because if you do that you're actually just taking that in from what you've learned from society or your families or you know just friends and peeps <laughs> truly are not real friends then so creative projects says your soul longs to express itself in creative ways we're getting you to infuse artistry and creativity into your life Creative expression makes you feel alive and excited and reignites passion towards your life. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, maybe some of you work with music as well. And the way music is encoded, again, it's different with the first. The first group is more like that pure sound. You're like more, more music, which is already music because it. people now with the mainstream, they relate more with that. Uh, so it's like the going into the world and changing with like changing the system within the system itself but in the form of these new creative ways. Message from your family of light, you have two cards. One is Lemuria, creating heaven and earth, it is happening. So with your art, you're bringing, some of you maybe are bringing forth landscapes, you know, like these cards, bringing forth landscapes of distant worlds that are not really that distant. They're always here, they're in our memory, they're in our Akashic um, record. And the second one is break the chain. Again, you see you're here to break the chain of the old ways of being. Ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future. 
So whatever you're doing with that creative way and form, uh, you're bringing forth back this like uh, paradise visions of greater reality. A lot of you are really open in your third eye and you're here to bring that. And breaking the chain means if you're still noticing things in your life, there is still like, you know, like going through that treadmill, um, through the tunnel. You're actually going through it to be reborn. So you have to like, again, the message is you have to go through the tunnel, which means you go into the system to help break it free. But you do it in this creative way, like seeing these greater visions of reality. So instead of saying how reality is bad now, a lot of you have to shift that into reality is what you created, which means you start with yourself, even though you didn't see it apparently on the outside, you start with envisioning in meditation, in anything you do with your art, with the music, uh, anything with the way you teach, the way you speak, even you're called to refine that. So instead of doing it the old way, you're bringing in the new frequencies. Good. So what is maybe there's still left to heal? You have self-love. Like I said, you're refining your frequency. You're called to soften yourself because a lot of those who are the warrior types, sometimes they get aggressive and not in a negative way. They get so eager that sometimes it doesn't produce the best results because we use a lot of energy for that. And you are not meant to be energetically depleted all the time just to serve. Again, that's not serving from unity. So self-love is, you see, you're, you're called as well, you also to meditate more, to open up more to just the loving stream and the knowing that you're not alone doing this. Because sometimes we might think we are. You know, people who are very talented, I can tell you myself, you're always going to say, I'm always alone for this because no one does it better than me. Yeah, in a way, that's right, because you know how you want to do it. But this is also opening up. You see, you're opening up to more love, which means more support, more assistance, um, it's like a general message for everyone being served so you can serve but this is a lot of pink so kind of pink is the antidote to your blue that obsidian blue that hysterium frequency is very serious sometimes it's very focused but this is also inviting in a more softer like a, a feminine approach it's like more pleiadian energy this one you see this is more pleiadian the sacred sexuality um the tuning into our bodies so that's magical so how can you embody this in your mission more you have mary of nazareth mary and she says this is the mother of god i am blessed my courage gives birth to the divine she has the sacred heart here and she's bringing i think it's a single white flower this is about the courage it's it's not always easy being you you know um you do a lot but the courage within you is, it's always like, it's just like your guideline. It's like even your motto. It's the, it's like, I can do anything. I am doing any, I can do anything. It doesn't mean I'm going to do everything. See, that's kind of like the difference. So it's receiving what you're meant to receive. So it's like Mary was meant to receive the child. It was a certain, you know, divine child, um, star child, so they could do their mission. It's like knowing what you are meant to do and that gives you courage in life and maybe what this empowers you because not everything is meant to be done or coming through you. You're not like a dumpster bin, you know? <laughs> you, are, you are also a being who deserves to do only what you really like. So this is like discerning. What is my divine initiation? What is truly meant to be of my initiative? And that always gives me this power and courage feeling and Maybe things that disempower me, maybe just not for me. It's kind of like that. Know how to wear your crown. She wears this crown. That's the message. So yeah, becoming more discerning. What is for you to do and what's not. And the last message is what is there maybe still to be activated within you. And it's funny, before we have number one, now we have number two. And you are number two pile or group. And you have the Akashic Library. So this is, I feel, this is that. This is that fine-tuning. Just like what they just shared like this is you we see here a divine um, being like a divine librarian and it's like like i said it's sorting out so the energy i'm feeling is like sorting out and he's writing his own something like a legacy maybe he's writing his uh life story but i feel the first message is just it's like sorting out what he has like you can't read all the books in the library you can't be 
No, the Kashic library is vast. You're learning to tune into what is very specific for you, what is called for you. And there is no other way to do, but like I said, what makes you feel empowered and what is creative. Sometimes we do things that we think they're creative, but it's just like putting like a stamp, like stamping, copy paste. Um, what is truly creative within your own authenticity, like I said, will feed you and that way you will ignite the courage that is a part of your warrior self, the one who shifts the paradigm, the paradigm shifter that you are. So you're, the gift you're learning is to tune into the Akasha, to tune into these realms and receive kind of like miniature assignments that are for you and learning what is not, what is not coming from this Akashic field, what is coming maybe from expectations from others because you do connect with a lot of people. And because people who are more like, you know, this vertical mission and being just a pure vessel, we don't connect with so many people physically. Um, but for you, it's different. So you're kind of learning to fine tune what is and what isn't. Okay? Good. We're going to do a gemstone for you. And let's see what it is. Something green. I don't know. Is it, I think it's chrysopress. It's a weird chunk. Let me see what this one makes me feel. It's like... Although it's it's a really pretty color, on both sides it has like leftovers, I think of some stone, it has these rugged edges, okay? So it's like your life maybe has been a little rough, you know? Um, but even though what tells me is even though you're a paradigm shifter, you also, within you lives a healer, okay? It's like everything we do, it's all healing in a way. But maybe because you always felt like you need to carry out all these tasks, you consider yourself this way so you didn't explore that aspect of yourself that much maybe you were focused more on this like i need to do this or i'm good if i'm doing all these things and you know all these tasks that are always in front of me but it's also like this feeling of okay these rugged edges are so like what helps you to have greater compassion for what humanity is going through what people are going through to develop this interest in these projects and tasks or maybe you're you're one of those who builds initiatives for then other people to follow and maybe sometimes people do these crowdfunding things like oh i have an idea please help support that and then you get people together even but this sometimes still it, you know because it requires so much work and it, it left you a little bit rough here in this and the edges it's just like it's just on the outside on the inside it's like pure crystal um but it's like it's like that energy, you know, of that standing tall. It's like standing tall, but you you don't always have to. Yeah, there's like this smudge that's in the shape of a, it's like a heart, but it also is like a phoenix inside. That's what I see. It's interesting how much we can see, which is turned into, right? Um, and this one has a thick, oh, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. If I turn it like this, it's a figure of the woman who is, she has like a, a tail almost. Is like she is like one of those ancient beings. I don't know if she's pregnant exactly, could be. But um, it's very interesting here for you. I feel like there's something you haven't tapped into yet. It's like that, that healer, although you're a paradigm shifter, there's within you starting something new. Like maybe the message of this Kashik library is there is a part you haven't tapped into yet. And it's like, it's like the whole, um, like in the library, there's a section. So instead of just being a book, it's like there's a whole section, you know. It's like now he's written a book. Okay, it's like a, okay, then what's left? What are, where are these books all part of? They're part of one section. So it feels like, yeah, they're going through a tunnel. That's your initiation to come out to see that there's more. I hope that's enough. I hope I gave you a little here to nibble on. A little bits and pieces. I'm already so hot. Probably would use a cold shower before doing number three. I hope we can do it in one shot. It's like a lot of talking. And I left my drink there, so I can't really reach for it. I'm going to have to do it later. So for number three, we have this beautiful swan, swan of grace, crystal swan. It has, it was a little gold, but I think now the sun kind of, yeah, it still has, it still has a little um, yellowish gold tint in it. So we have this feather. We're going to do, again, the same ritual as above. So below, from left to right, my feminine and masculine self are complete balance and harmony. And I'm unifying that now to receive guidance based on my wholeness, completion, and unity. Thank you. So let's start. First message for you is earth healing. Do you see that? I hope you do. I never know how to show it to this camera. 
The first word I heard here is earth angels and the nurturers, okay? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful lovers of life, divine lovers. So you are, it's like this, I see this, oh, you know, <laughs> sorry, this is like the first thing I see. That's like helping the children of earth. So when you see the way this world is still structured through so much suffering and pain, you want to reach out. It's like the aspect of the Divine Mother is really strongly guiding you here, naturally. So there's like, you understand the value in humanity and the human race, um, the beauty of it, because there's this beautiful child here, here in the back. Um, you're, you're knowing the value. And just by being here, you want to be part of this, even if it's just like being a part of this realm. And knowing that your energy, just by being present in love, changes their lives as the people maybe you know and maybe people you don't know and it's that earth healing through it's through the heart is embracing yourself your inner child so basically just by doing that just by living your life as in, always in tune with your inner child and feeding that and nurturing that you are already contributing to the whole and a lot of people don't know they think i'm just living my life it's nothing special but they were chosen for that to live it fully to live it like because, you know, in eons of time, the inner child was not developed to a, a place that we can actually call it a divine child. The divine love is fully embodied in a human, and that's kind of like what you're here to do. Okay? Bring it to your own example and then show to others and just beam it out. So the next one is two came out, prosperity, and who tantric journey. Okay? So prosperity says the frequency of prosperity supports our feeling of well-being by allowing the inclusion of everything that makes our body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit sing. It invites us to express ourselves in joy and celebration of the abundance and riches that the universe provides. We are here to bring back abundance to this planet through love. And there cannot be abundance if there is no love. That's your mission. And the tantric journey is a card of harmonized, synchronized energies within you, the divine masculine and feminine, because that's what actually births this divine child. I've been talking about these in my recent videos specifically. So it says the frequency of tantric journey helps us to unlock the hidden knowledge and wisdom that we intrinsically hold about how to reach a state of wholeness and completion through our sensual experiences with ourselves and with another. This also can... Uh, be accompanied with a partnership, like being in this loving partnership, being in this partnership that truly is built on this tantric foundation, not just this codependency. It's like you're, you're creating things through life force. And this is why uh, prosperity abounds. You know, you're doing things very naturally. You're a very organic being. You're just, you just want to love. And tantra is pure love, basically. Um, we call it sexual creative energy. And what is creative? Creativity is love. Okay, so there's like this wholeness within, and there's this, um, the Merkaba, but there's this triangulation in each of here present as well. And then the next one we have, how many? Three, whoa. So <laughs> three from the mandala. Here is from word to world. And this is the goddess Sarasvati and Ammonite. You see there's this um, Ammonite here. So it's this shell. It's the spiral of life. It's like, yeah, where life truly springs forth. And it's this, just the beauty, the seed of this divine love. That's what keeps you going. From word to world means also that you have a strong impact, which just maybe giving a loving word. Just even your words, not just what they're, they're meaning, but the vibration, even of your voice. Some of you might have a voice that's, very soothing, very angelic. That's who your earth angels, lovers of light. Um, and Sarasvati is also many times a goddess of arts. So beauty, a, a beauty means a lot to you in your realm. See, there's like everything here is so beautifully structured and it expands out from the core, from the center. Maybe a lot of you are artists that just paint images of love, maybe. Ascendant Master Mary Magdalene, ooh, it's funny because you later got the back too. That's why I'm laughing. And Aqua Aura Quartz. Aqua Aura is also um, the Aquamarine is the Elohim Ray as well. This is really that period. It says Divine Alchemy. Well, 
because you're in love, because you love so much, everything you create is born from that love. You don't have to work much to manifest, to do, to achieve. You're just a lover. And when I say a lover, it doesn't mean, okay, you're a lover when you're in a relationship. No, you're a lover of life. So this is like the waters of life as well, the sacred feminine, the divine mother energy. This is beautiful. And then you have Archangel Ignacio in Tiger's Eye. <laughs> I keep shifting it. And it says, um, Tiger spirit rises. So even though you're a very gentle being, your vulnerability is directly linked also with your power. You're not someone to be messed with. People might think, oh, look at this beautiful being, this angel. <laughs> you know, when you show your teeth. You do it out of love, though. You know, it's not like that. But it's it's showing me, like, you have great power, and that power comes through love. It's like the tigress or the lioness. They're all very fierce mothers, protective. It's like the, the feline. It's also the feline frequency here. You're Definitely your star lineage is of the feline races who have been contributing to this planet in a very unique way through the mothering and the motherhood archetype even imbuing it in a lot of the animal species like you know the, the lions the tigers many cats um, who have an, embodied this aspect you know cats are healers and we say what do they do they just lie on a certain spot and they just channel healing energy a lot of what you do through love is very simple you don't always see it sometimes you just go to a random place just to leave imprints of love there that's really beautiful so i feel the combination of these cards is like um, from word to world it's like you're a worldly spirit not necessarily that you need to go out there go out and about or travel the whole world it's like you embrace the world within you you are the world you 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 feel yourself not separate from it it's like you might come out as a very simple person but you just love so much you love nature you love the world you just you just love everything you love creation your love is angel angelic love <sighs> reminds me of of myself a lot in my home so number three what the gifts that you like to do that you have within you or maybe you know aspire to do is oracle cards and it says you're able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others a lot of you are oracle readers but this is not just about that you see the woman is wearing pink here and she's looking and gaining insight this is about you just always know what to do, what to say to people. You're always channeling. You're always channeling guidance, even if you think I'm just saying things. That's not channeled. When I do oracles, I'm channeling. No, it's like your whole life is one channeled session that never ends, um, and it's like you use a lot of secret items. Divination is not just oracles. You know, I, I have so many items at home. I should get just a separate room for that when I have a house of my own. And it's the crystals and it's the items you pick in nature. I feel here like. It's like everything is so sacred to you because you understand the value of life. You know, like that shell we had before, the ammonite here. All life springs forth and it's all magic. We see everything as magical. So you're working with magic a lot. But you also, yeah, maybe you just love oracle cards and a lot of you might be readers. But this is about a deeper insight into what divination is for you. That everything you receive from spirit and nature, all these messages, you're always receiving them and you're, you're meant to convey them forward. And sometimes just to yourself, sometimes to people, you know, sometimes in greater audiences, you never know. Okay, these two advices from um, angels, I have to tell a story here because as I shuffled, one of the cards flipped so badly that it actually, it cracked. So it's kind of broken in half and it's exactly at the heart area <laughs> in the heart. The card is called the heart chakra and you have to reward yourself. So this is, it makes me feel like, because it, it's kind of like broken, okay? It's not broken, it's just like there's a line now going through. So it makes me feel like because you are so loving, a lot of times you forgot about yourself and you didn't fully, fully nurture yourself. You know, that's where this line came through. And it's like, like the lines we have on our hands, they're great stories. But some of the times these stories are also like cold messages of all of what we've been through. You know, you've been through a lot, maybe not always on earth. Um, but you carry this, like how love is. Love allows everything. Love is everything. That's why love encompasses all experiences. And that's where wisdom comes from. So the reward yourself comes to acknowledge yourself a little more, maybe a little lot more. But let's read the messages. The heart chakra says, love is the heart of the matter. Your heart is the center within your physical being attuned most to love. 
It's safe for you to love and be loved with an open heart as we stand by with perfect protection and guidance. You're so connected and so loved. That's why you love so much and it's vice versa. And the reward yourself says you've been giving a lot of yourself lately and it's time for you to receive. What will I receive after this video? <laughs> a great meal and middle night snack. Make time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. This balance of giving and receiving is essential to keeping your energy, mood, and motivation at a consistently high level. So like I said before, the overall theme for everyone here is that allowing ourselves to be served so we can serve from fullness, to serve forward. And uh, rewarding ourselves is not always just like with physical things, but maybe more just time and space for yourself. Take a breather. Let's see what messages from your family of light are. You have three. You have don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? A lot of these gentle but also fierce beings like lovers of life feel like they're out of this world, you know, and we feel like how people are doing all these things and projects and this and we don't always have that. We just have so much love and we would say, well, I don't do as much as others do, but you do in a different way. You know, it's like don't try to compare. Don't think you're meant to do something someone else is doing. It can be, I don't know, a pile two. <laughs> you are you, you know? And again, you have a shell here. You have all these shells. They remind me of the origin of light. And all these shells are directly connected with angelic frequencies as well because they channel sound. And this is, again, pure angelic frequency through the tones. So you are here. Maybe still, you know, your eyes like covered. Maybe a lot of you didn't yet awaken to that fact of who you truly are, you know? It's like you're just like mm, looking out this and seeing that there's others behind you, other versions. You're not alone. And there's lots of pink here. The next one is get grounded. Sometimes, you know, there cannot be too much love. There is no such thing as too much love. But it is how this love is channeled, how it is, you know, grounded. And a lot of it is this, the self-love. It's through self-love we ground it. We don't, sometimes we feel like our heart chakra will burst. You know, that's what the line came through in that card. And now I have ruined cards, like forever, right? No, just kidding. Um, but this says empaths, highly sensitive, connect with nature. Yes, you're so sensitive. You can feel everyone, everything. And that's where you can attune to everyone. You're like a pure mirror to everyone. You can just say the right things and people wouldn't just say to you how do you know this and you think okay you have a special gift or something no you're just you're just love you're a mirror for love to everyone and sometimes you will channel things or say things that are maybe they wouldn't like to hear and sometimes what they do want to hear because it depends on what love wants to convey to them through you in that example and again connect to nature and you also have a message to meditate all of the three groups have more meditation and that's why i'm doing so many light activations and meditations this summer that i've never done before these are intense times uh, you have so much flowers here so many roses you're definitely this beautiful 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 being divine lover angel on earth it's like when you're in nature and you meditate like this you're just aware of nature like oh Beings like this are like, I love this tree, I love that tree, I love all trees, I love this, oh, you know, it's like, but it's not infatuated, it's real. It's like in my own life, like uh, animals always come in my presence or butterflies are always landing on me. It's like, it's, spirit is letting you know, that's an affirmation that you are a pure vessel for love, for divine love. And the last one is keepers of earth. That's who you are. Only true embodiers of divine love can actually be pillars of of this keepers of the earth so you're not alone ancient ancestors stand beside you again this feline spirits see beautiful divine mothers divine mothers of life okay what then the third pile is maybe still to heal in your life in your journey and what to accept about yourself the first one is beauty, that's 17, and tarot 17 is the star, and feeling like you don't always see yourself as beautiful as you see the whole world. You still need to embrace maybe a little bit of that. Maybe sometimes doing um, the art of sensual healing, sensual oils, massaging yourself with these great smells, putting fragrance all over you. Lately I'm doing that a lot, just I love fragrance around me, like put this spray on, this, 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 and that, it's all natural of course. But it's just feeling that feminine attunement through 
through the scent, fragrance, attuning the sensuality, seeing your value through through love, seeing yourself in the mirror, like how does love see me? Because the mind sometimes will say, I don't have this and that. And like, oh, you, you block the frequency here. The love sees you as so perfect. And this is maybe something you still haven't fully embraced. It's like time to put all that bling. It's like there's a lot of bling here, but it's like, put it up, you know, just see yourself and the beautiful, vulnerable nakedness that you are, beautiful soul. And the second one is victim consciousness. So because these beings who give so much and sometimes overgive a lot, like I said, there isn't such a thing as too much love, but the way the love is given and shared is not always applicable in, in, in that unison and wholeness sense. That's what we're learning on earth. So victim consciousness comes when you kind of are aware that this is happening. But instead of acknowledging it, sometimes we go like, eh, you rant, like, why is this happening? Why am I always saying this? You know, you, you fall into this sometimes still, even if it's just little pieces, you feel like, why am I always the one who does this? You know, why am I never like other people, like this comparing? And it comes from lack of acknowledging just, just being you is enough, that beauty. It's like, you're such a beautiful being. You have so much love. You know, I recently had a dream. And there was a woman in the being, and this was just before I woke up, and the woman kept telling me, you're so beautiful, you don't know. Oh my gosh, you're just so beautiful, you have so much love. And I woke up with the, I didn't remember all the words she was saying, but I woke up with the purest feeling of being acknowledged. And if someone else acknowledges us like this, real world dreams doesn't matter. But when it's done through ourselves, in our own mirror, that's the finest mana, the divine. Okay, the next one is, how can you embody more of your soul through the divine feminine um, approach? And of course, you have Mary Magdalene again, like I said. And she's saying, uh, she's the apostle to the apostles, You're the queen of the queens. I am the bridge between heaven and earth. I'm fully human and fully divine. You are here to just show that love can fully be embodied in human form. That's what you do. And it is enough because it is the holiest of the holies. And that's what you've chosen because beings who just have so much love, who are born of pure love, that's what they choose to do. You can do other things too, but that is your main guideline. And Magdalene is letting you know, and she's holding this golden egg of creation, is saying to know yourself. Everything you birth comes through this golden egg of creation. The next one is, I don't know how to pronounce this, and Hedwana, the high priestess, I am one with my soul and my soul is a legacy of love. Again, same message or love embodying your soul by just being aware of it just every day maybe communing with it in the way that you ask what is my soul meant to bring through divine love today and allowing that to unfold during your day instead of saying what's supposed to be my schedule what's supposed to be my tasks what am i supposed to do you know how do i get value how do i feel like i'm worthy of you know doing this and that just how do I serve divine love? And how does divine love serve through me? Or how am I served through divine love? So that I can serve forward as the embodiment of divine love. The high priestess. So, yes. You definitely are a channel for love. You don't have to use all words all the time. It's the energy that comes through you, not just the words that will feed a lot of people. With that, what they're empowered, um, and how to say this, um, uh, it's a poverty consciousness. Yeah, they're in poverty of, most at this time you know you can always get knowledge very quickly but love is something you can't like just get it's like what is nourished through you through eons and the more the more it just comes and that births that wisdom and the last one is yishit soga so yeah i don't know how to pronounce it as well all these uh, cultural names lady of the lotus born again lotus that's you. Embodiment is the deepest bliss. My body was made for enlightenment. You're meant to cultivate the deepest pleasure through just knowing love in your physical human form. That's the tantric journey card from before. It's in line with that. She's like a tantric dancer. You might be that as well. I do that too. Not always. But when I do it, it's pure bliss and ecstasy. And you just become one with the spiral of life. So if that image ignites something in you, go for it embodiment is the true bliss you're meant to become love purely expressed in human form and the last one is what is still meant to be activated through you from the akashic tarot is the queen of scrolls again it makes me feel like truly knowing yourself is this queen <laughs> if you're a man a king but it doesn't matter it's it's we all have this 
bliss of this knowing within, it's, it's gender free, it's beyond that, is like going to the deepest aspect of who you are, like really digging deep. So maybe there's some things, like memory, you, you've written something, you've written a script that only you truly know, you know, and again, I'm guided to show you this wand, how it applies to this. The swans are like the purest representation of grace, but remember before we had the fierce card as well. I've just recently learned that they can actually kind of like harm someone with just like flapping their wings or squeezing their wings, not just with their beaks, which can be very strong, but they only do that if they feel like, hey, you know, I'm being threatened in some way. I'm just standing up for myself. They know their sacred space. They don't like to be violated. And um, when they do have it, they look like the purest creatures of grace. This is for you. You need to cultivate your sacred space and know your worth because that's when you truly flourish. And you can create the space for the ripening of divine love through you, for the uh, divine magical child to become the embodiment of the mother living through you, the goddess living through you. So the queen of scrolls is that the wise crone. And when I say the crone, it doesn't mean you have to be old. The crone really relates to the wholeness of yourself, this completion. But the crone, you know, crone also relates to, just today I channeled something like this. I don't remember it now because it was during uh, my run and it just, you know, came and went. But it's about, yeah, just coming into this realization that it's all actually very simple. And that coming and returning back to love is not like something you have to learn for, like learn or aim for somewhere outside of you but this is the script that's already written for you it's when you tune into that gift how to tune to it in each moment it's going to bring you value in each moment and you never know okay extra gemstone for you let's see what it is okay i always i always pick this one i don't know why this is the rainbow fluorite that um crystal or gemstone attunes us to refinement of the thoughts. It's like clearing of the mental body, but it's also reminding me of a nebula or something in this moment. Let's see, what is the message of this stone? Like in general, you know, when you pick a specific stone, you have to also feel what's in the moment. Again, it has this crack. You see, like the card before that cracked, but I feel its message at this time is specifically about color. It has a violet and it has again aquamarine. So it's like violet, a very evolved, very deeply spiritual soul. And then aquamarine, it's like carrying the waters of life, the Elohim, that ray. Yeah, I feel that's it. It has this crack, but it doesn't mean you're broken. It means you're learning about life through this observation and learning about compassion for all ways of being on this planet, different ways that people live in and how they live. So sometimes it affects you, but it doesn't have to all the time in the way it used to. To be really detached from it and at the same time see it as love. So your question is always, how does love see reality? I see reality like, oh, this is bad. This is like this. But how does love see it? Love sees everything simply as a temporary expression, shape-shifting expression that grows through its own manifestation, the realization of the self that eventually unfolds. So, yeah. And what I'm also guided to do now is I will pull one last message for all of us. For all those of you, maybe some of you said, no, that's all so general. <laughs> Have one more. Just going to do one more, although this video is super long already. It's kind of like a movie you watch. It's the length of a movie already. Come on. <laughs> the only thing that's longer than this is my courses. But that's okay. Let's see. What do we get right now? Get to here. Those of you who maybe have sticked around that long, thank you for your time. Thank you for my time is karmic clearing see and the message at this time in this moment of this is we're growing from this little little tiny tiny into like going into it's like we're going being embraced 
by this greater being. I feel that the picture says more than the, the title. And five, five is the number of, number of change. We're going through a lot of changes at this time. And if you felt this lately, and you felt like I'm this, I started the journey like this tiny being. Now I'm like these hands, but then I'm also this being that oversees. I'm, I'm, wait a minute, what really am I? And the question here is like, you know, <laughs> if it's not the right question, the answer is like, you know, what? Um, what are you not? What are you not? It's like all of this is us. All of this is simultaneously occurring. Where it's like we are creating this higher expanded space that we're now walking through. And it's like a cavern that's lit with so much light. Maybe before it was dark. And many initiations of the light felt this way. They were not all initiations of the light. Some of them were also very uh, shadow based for a reason. But this created now a cavern full of light because we're moving through. And it's white. <laughs> I think it's some sort of a white calcite or something. I don't know because someone gave it to me once. I remember this. I was given this stone and someone said, this is just for you. This is what I feel for you. I think so. And it's like, yeah, the white. The white. We're starting brand new. That's it. And we're in white as well. So thank you for watching. I hope this was as beautiful for you as it was for me. Maybe just with your part of the message or with all of them. Uh, if you want to see more things like that, maybe in the near future as well, let me know. And uh, you can always communicate with me on my Instagram. That's where more communication takes place. And uh, I invite you to come see me there. If you want to contribute to my channel and if you value this time and input and all this freely sharing of divine love, you can always support by donating. But you can also check my personal services page for more. And as always, I send you so many beautiful blessings of divine love, wisdom, and power. Take care. And I'm using all three feathers to cool myself off after this heat wave of constant receiving. And um, I just love you. I hope you love yourself even more. <laughs> Take care.